home soil, the Enterprise gets taken over by a rock. <laughs> I guess technically that's kind of accurate. So the Enterprise goes to the planet Valara 3, and they're checking out a terraforming team who, over the course of the next few decades, is going to terraform a planet to be an M-Class. Nice vegetation, um, capable of supporting life. So when they get there, initially no one answers their hails, and then when the guy in charge does answer it, he is very irritated, and Troy senses that he's hiding something, and he doesn't want them to come down. But Picard is pretty forceful and says, we're coming down. I do think it's funny that Troy alerts Picard something is wrong, but she does it right in front of the guy in the communication, which is kind of rude to Troy. <laughs> His fear is escalating. If you'll excuse me, sir, I, I really must get back to work. I sense deliberate concealment, sir. Of what? I don't know. He's head of the KGB in the Roger Moore era of the James Bond films. The opening explanation of the terraforming, I think, is a great example of what sci-fi should be, where they're talking about the science and everything that's going on, and it's more than just a background element. It's something that actually gets discussed, which is not something that you see a lot in anything, but especially not in modern Star Trek. It makes me think of in Star Trek Into Darkness when they use cold fusion to shut down a volcano, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, I'm no scientist, but I know cold fusion isn't going to stop a volcano. Volcano. The terraformer leading the away team around, her acting is very wooden. It's on off robotic. She also talks really loudly at some points. Stay and night. The planet must also be without life or the prospect of life developing naturally. The Federation determines if that's so. So one of the lasers kills one of the scientists, and they're trying to figure out what went wrong with it. So Data goes into the room, and they're going to reactivate it because they think it's okay. But right before he reactivates it, he's right in front of it, and it's obvious it's supposed to be a dangerous setup. It's a little too obvious. Might as well have a Bernard Herrmann score going in the background, too. <laughs> Well, I like how after Data goes in there and it turns on and it starts trying to kill him, you don't see what's happening inside the room. You're with the other characters outside, and they keep asking Data what's happening. And at first, Data's like, there's too much going on for me to respond right now. But even after everything is over with, Picard's like, tell me now what's happening. And Data doesn't respond for a long time to build up the tension for no reason. And the characters are just as frustrated as the audience is, and it doesn't make any sense. And then Data comes out and he's, oh, everything is okay. And right before Data comes out, Picard says, I'm going to beam him out of there. Why wouldn't you do that immediately? Especially after the one guy already got killed by that laser. They should have planned on that in the first place in case something happened. Also not turning on the laser when it's pointed right at the back of your head. So they find life on the planet, but it's inorganic life. So there's this huge debate about what life is. And I like that too, because those are some genuine questions that scientists ask about whether things that we find on other planets are going to qualify as life and what exactly constitutes life. What's the definition of life? I do appreciate that they're starting to pull Wesley into conversations now. This is the first episode where they do that. Instead of shunning him out of the room, Beverly's asking the computer to theorize, and the computer gets pretty deep for being a computer. Because it's making a bunch of scientific statements, and Beverly says, Disregard incongruity and theorize as to source. Life. Oh, that was so dumb. Just a stupid drama moment. For me, it shows how reliant they are on technology in the future, that instead of trying to figure things out themselves, they just keep asking the computer questions until it gives them an answer. Which, if it's there, that's a valid way to go about things, I guess, but it kind of explains how all the characters don't really know how to handle things when there's a situation where they can't just ask a computer a question. And in the episode prior, when the bow breaks, that whole planet was in the same situation where they couldn't even tie their shoes without the computer. So they just saw it. They never made the connection. We're in the same boat, just not as far. So as they're scanning it and changing their proximity to it, it tries to talk to them. It starts working the translator. They already know at that point it's intelligent life. They want to communicate with it, but as soon as it starts to try and communicate, Beverly says, Evacuating lab. It's not shooting lasers at them. It's not taking the air out of the room. It's trying to talk. And then Wesley says, What's wrong with the translator, sir? They're so dumb. I mean, they definitely don't handle things in the best way. Are you talking about this episode or in general? So they start calling it the microbrain, which is what Q called Worf earlier. Oh, that's right, yeah. I wonder if he took offense to that. Might as well just call it Worf. <laughs> they figure out that it's photoelectric, so when it tries to kill them, they just turn down the lights, and then they make a truce with it. The effect of the microbrain and the capsule with just the glowing lights looks really cheap because they're not moving or anything. They just look like a bunch of lights. They should have done a little bit more. They should have at least have them moving in place or something. And the camera keeps cutting back to it and just pointing out how cheap it looks. 
How about that crystal? That looks expensive. When it turns into a big crystal, it also breaks the little dome. The pieces are down on the ground, but we don't actually see anything explode. <laughs> yeah, you see a bad superimposed little explosion, I guess. Home soil, overall. What would you say? I thought it was good ideas, a good story, but it loses a lot of momentum toward the end. I would give it a B minus. Man, you're rating shit so high. I like the idea, and it's not the first time they're going to use this specific idea. I would give this one a C minus. Really that low? The characters really don't have anything to do. It has a compelling start, but once they figure it out, like you said, it loses a lot of momentum and pretty much grinds to a halt with them trying to figure out how to get out of that situation, but it takes way too long. I think the use of science and the explanation for everything keeps things interesting enough for me. Well, you're a big Jules Verne fan. I could see why you would like this one. I've read one Jules Verne book in completion. And that alone made you start the Northeast chapter of his fan club. <laughs> I would stick with C-. It could have been a lot better. Could have been better, but I was happy with it. Yeah, you say the same thing about your kids. 